All right, everyone, Dworkin and the Krasensteins and Maddow and all of these others are still titillating themselves to the thought of uh, Trump getting impeached or indicted by Mueller. Uh, but we've got a big update on the Mueller probe, and it looks more like it, it's a corroboration of what I've been suspecting for several months. I suspect, I'm not sure of this, but I suspect, the Mueller probe has downgraded itself is internally. They realize that Trump didn't collude with Russia. They realize his inner circle, that means basically his family members and, and like Roger Stone, they didn't collude with Russia. Since there was no Russian collusion between the Trump campaign and Russians, they have to find something else in order to justify retroactively the fact that their probe existed in the first place. See, the th what I suspect is that the probe was predicated on false info, mainly the Steele dossier. I know that the FBI is like, well, that's not the only thing that we use. You know, the Judicial Watch FOIAs, this stuff, heavily redacted when it gets out, but there are other bits of information apparently that they had. The most talked about, the most obvious, the one that was leaked over and over by the deep state to the media was the Steele dossier. I guess they never suspected the American people would come to find out that most of it was total bullshit and the rest is dubious at best. Oh yeah, Trump is such a one-dimensional villain that he has Russian prostitutes piss on the Obama's bed after they leave. Makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Not the sort of claim for which I would want more evidence than just the claim itself. You know, perfectly mundane and normal to assume that people, I mean, people do that all the time. I know I would. You know, next time I go to Russia, I'm certainly going to, you know, do that. It's bullshit. The Steele dossier is at least half fake. The rest of it's probably fake. And yet it was fronted to the FISA courts. Now, I think this happened. I think the Mueller probe began. Very quickly, they realized, whoops, we accidentally triggered this probe. Rosenstein didn't read it because he's a rubber stamper. I mean, he probably doesn't read any FISA application. He literally just, the job of the FISA court is to rubber stamp things. Once it goes before an, an intel agency is referred to them, they rubber stamp it too and the investigation goes forward. They have so much faith, I think, in the internal mechanisms of the surveillance state, they don't even bother to check. So, so that's why he wouldn't want to uh, let the probe go. Mueller doesn't want to look like an ass. He doesn't want to go down in history as, as that dude who ran a probe into the ground, found nothing, got fired, never worked again, and was in total disgrace before the entire nation. He doesn't want to go down history like that. Nor, by the way, does the FBI want to reckon with the fact, separate second link in the description, it's possible that a lot of this was predicated on, on misinfo from British intelligence, working with the FBI, which they're not directly supposed to be doing. But the CIA apparently referred the info to them. Whoops, they cut it from the wrong source. It looks like a total clusterfuck. And so what I think is that they're digging for anything to justify their probe's existence. Retroactively, they're doing exactly what they're not supposed to do. What they're supposed to do is trigger an investigation because there's reasonable suspicion. You have, you have multiple pieces of evidence you think that reasonably would cause enough suspicion of a crime so that you can trigger an investigation. You go before a court and you get your proper warrant. Instead, they had false info and not much else. When before a rubber stamping court, triggered an investigation, weeks or months later, realized that they were leading a shit show that was based on false info, realized that Trump didn't collude, did nothing illegal, that his family didn't collude or didn't, and, and didn't do anything illegal. And so now they have to fixate on finding whatever they can. Thankfully, Rosenstein made sure that the scope of their investigation was extremely broad, so they can go after anyone Trump ever talked to in the last 30 years. Thankfully for them, they stumbled upon Paul Manafort's association with the Podesta Group and his laundering of tens or hundreds of millions for a pro-Russian Ukrainian group. Now, I'm going to mention three names here, and riddle me this. Who are they all associated with, and who are they all not associated with? Tony Podesta, Vin Weber, and Greg Craig, whose name, you know, rhymes, and also it ends, first name ends with a G, second name begins with a C. Very difficult for a Vermonter to pronounce Greg Craig very quickly, and actually enunciate it without saying Greg Craig, or something like that. Uh, just a little aside there. So he should punch his mother for naming him like that on behalf of everyone from, you know, the, the from this particular region, the Connecticut River Valley, uh, which is where <laughs> I was raised. The early part, this side of Vermont, more neutral in its, you know, uh, dialect. So Mueller has referred these three people to prosecutors. Who do they all have in common and who do they all have in common is not apparently having associated with the former... Paul Manafort, central focus of his current only ongoing post-indictment actual trial. 
Who do they not relate to? Donald Trump. There's no indication any of these people ever spoke to him. Vin Weber was definitely a Republican congressman, but again, we're talking about events from 10 or so years ago. We're talking about the mid-2000s. Vin Weber, at the time, he's, he's working as a lobbyist for Gazprom. It's apparently a Russian company, uh, a Russian oil company. So yeah, there's a little Russian involvement, but it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. What about uh, Tony Podesta? brother of John Podesta, mysteriously enough, Clinton's campaign advisor uh, or campaign chairman. I can't remember which one. I, I, I think cham uh, chairman. So Tony Podesta, uh, working with a lobbying group, working, he provably with Manafort around the time he was laundering money, he is involved directly in that. So he's got an association with Manafort. We don't know of any association between the Podesta group or anyone extended beyond them and Donald Trump. And again, this was a decade ago. What about Greg Craig? What's he known for? He, he, he was an unofficial advisor and indeed, I believe, worked as a debate proxy when he, in the run-up for 2008. He literally was pretending to be McCain at the time. He worked with Obama, endorsed him. He worked with the Clintons and he runs a, a worldwide sort of multinational legal firm that helps defend corporations and state entities. And apparently some of those are Russian in nature. So you've got your Russian connection, you've got your collusion, you've got c connections, but they're all to Manafort. And they all detail something that happened 10 years before Trump's campaign actually existed. Has nothing to do with Donald Trump. I think what Mueller is doing right now is breathing a sigh of relief and hoping that as many of these people get plastered into a prison cell as possible to justify an expensive and, and lengthy investigation that so far has indicted Manafort and people associated with him, Flynn on unrelated charges that are probably not even gonna stick, and some Russian nationals that have done what happens in every fucking election, which is that people shitpost, troll, and buy ads against or for politicians. Sometimes they do that for politics in other countries. I could buy ads, for example. I could make and run an ad right now against Vladimir Putin. It would not be illegal. It doesn't mean anyone in Russia was involved with that and nobody over there is gonna face repercussions. I am capable of doing that. It's the same exact thing. The US Air Force has tens of thousands of proxy accounts just on Facebook to push propaganda, to like or dislike or mass flag or, or share around certain info based on what the US government and intel agencies and military want. It just happens. States do this. Get fucking used to it. When Facebook comes out and rambles about uh, uh, bot accounts and stuff, it was funny. They took down a bunch of pages that appear to have been pro-left, like an Abolish Ice group got taken down uh, the other day by Zuckerberg. They're like, well, it's being run by inauthentic accounts, possibly foreign in nature. So in other words, the Russians are pushing Abolish Ice. Okay, so the far left is being, so essentially uh, the Bernie Sanders side of the left. Yeah, it makes more sense. They would really actually weaken the United States, unlike Trump. Look at our economy right now, dude. Proof is in the pudding. If the Russian government colluded to elect Trump in order to weaken the United States, they failed miserably, and then they were left trying to control a puppet they couldn't control, and now Trump has made them their bitch. So it's really, really funny. No, the Mueller probe has become nothing more than a Manafort-focused shit show in an attempt to, to dredge up. What they're going to do is they're going to make a huge case. Mueller, when he ends his probe, I expect he's going to come forth and he's going to detail point by point. Manafort did this. Manafort did that. Flynn did this. Here's where Vin Weber sticks in. He's going to sit there and ramble for hours about this elaborate connection. And then when the press asks him, well, what about Trump? He's going to say, no, there was no collusion. Yeah, but we got a bunch of bad guys, so don't worry. The probe was a resounding success. It's just he particularly didn't do anything wrong. No collusion. No Russian involvement in the election that did anything of any substantial nature. No, absolutely not. But this other stuff, he's going to try to sell it because originally the probe was sold to the U.S. public with the understanding that they were specifically looking for Russian collusion involving high-level Trump officials. That's the only reason we were given, and it was told to us that the Steele dossier was central to that because it made Trump look really bad. When we found out the Steele dossier wasn't actually bad because it wasn't true, all of a sudden they changed their tune. When we found out that there's no reasonable suspicion that Trump colluded with a foreign state or that any member of his immediate family did, all of a sudden it became about Manafort. He's trying to save face. He's doing the lawyer speak thing. He's trying desperately not to mention Trump. Why do you think Ma Mueller at this point doesn't even talk about Trump when Trump attacks him anymore? Why? Why do you think Trump attacks him at a whim? He knows that he didn't do anything wrong. He knows he didn't collude. He's sitting there laughing. 
He's laughing because he knows when the Mueller probe ends, he's going to gain five to ten approval points and the Republicans are going to sweep Congress. If it happens before the midterms, woe unto the Democratic Party. They're not going to retake the House. No, the, the Republicans will probably have a supermajority in the Senate if that happens, and Trump will definitely win 2020 if, it, uh, if the Mueller probe breaks before then. That's my prediction. I think it will happen. That's about all. Peace out.